four facts about heaven. Number one, it is a place of eternal joy and bliss. Revelation 21 verse 4 says, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Heaven is a place of absolute joy. Imagine God wiping away your tears. That is what the Bible says, and it is not an exaggeration. There will be no weeping or sorrow or sickness or fear in heaven. Most fortunately, the joy of heaven is not momentary, it is eternal. Your happiest day on earth cannot be compared with the joy of heaven. It is a city where we will never grow old or lose our loved ones to death as we do on earth. All the pleasures in this world combined cannot be compared to the joy of heaven. It is beyond our reasoning to think of a place where there is no sorrow or tears or heartbreak. We can only attempt to describe the joy of heaven. The experience will be really overwhelming. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 17 says, There is a weight of glory in heaven which cannot be compared to our light and momentary affliction on earth. Number 2. It is a place of final victory over sin. Isaiah 35 verse 8 and 9 says, And an highway shall be there, and a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those the wayfaring men, though fools shall not err therein. No lion shall be there, nor any ravenous beast shall go up thereon. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. Heaven is a place of absolute holiness to God. There is nothing unclean that will enter into heaven. It is a destination for saints. In heaven, there will be nothing like being tempted to sin. The nature of sin is completely dealt with, and the appetite of our flesh for sins is eternally disabled. Our thoughts, words, and actions will be holy in heaven. Here on earth we are tempted and we strive against sin, but there in heaven our final victory over sin is granted. The streets of heaven are the highways of holiness, a place where only those that are redeemed by the blood of Jesus will walk through. Number 3. It is a place of unequal rewards. This is a great truth about heaven. It is a place of unequal rewards. Even though all believers will go to heaven, they will not be rewarded the same way. We shall be rewarded according to the quality of our work of God on earth. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 10 says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. The judgment seat of Christ is exclusively for the judgment of believers' work, and we shall be rewarded according to our commitment to the things of God on earth. We shall be rewarded differently, because we did not serve God equally. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 13 to 15 Every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. 
There are believers whose works shall be burnt with fire because they did not build with quality material. People could applaud you on earth, but if all you offered was eye service, your work will be burnt and you will get no reward for it. On the other hand, believers who tirelessly worked for God out of sincere heart will receive their crowns. Although all believers will go to heaven, our equal rewards will differentiate us. According to the measure of our work, we will receive different crowns in heaven. There are different crowns for various people according to the quality of their work and service in God's vineyard. The Bible highlighted five types of crowns for believers in heaven. Number one, the incorruptible crown. The incorruptible crown is for believers who dealt with flesh and brought it under control. 1 Corinthians 9 verse 24 and 25 Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize? So run that ye may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. Number two, the crown of righteousness. The crown of glory is for all believers that are earnestly waiting for his second coming and love. The crown of righteousness is obtained only by faith. 2 Timothy 4 verse 8 Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Number 3. The Crown of Life the crown of life is prepared for believers who endured persecution for righteousness' sake. It is for people who went through persecutions, sufferings, and trials. Revelation 2 verse 10, it is a promise. Number 4. The Crown of Glory It is the crown for people in the fivefold ministry, apostles, pastors, teachers, prophets, evangelists, and every person watching over God's flock and feeding his sheep. It is for people who are passionate about the gospel and spreading it to every end of the earth. 1 Peter 5 verse 2 to 4 This crown, the Bible says, it does not fade away. Number 5. The Crown of Rejoicing it is for every believer, every saved person that believes in the death, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus Christ. 1 Thessalonians 2 verse 19 We won't become angels. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 51, We will be changed. Our corruptible body is going to put on an incorruptible body, and our mortal shall put on immortality. We will have glorified bodies, glorified bodies which will be able to stand the glorious presence of our Heavenly Father and the dazzling light of our Lord Jesus. Indeed, we will no longer wear this body, I am sure we all are familiar with this saying. When someone we really loved and was such a kind person dies, we say, heaven just received another angel. As much as this is harmless and our attempt at romanticizing their death as a transition to a better place, it isn't scriptural. If you are not saved yet, you need to give your life to Christ first before you can be enrolled as a candidate of heaven. Meanwhile, believers who are backsliding must amend their ways too so that they will not end up laboring in vain. We must not allow the sorrows of this world to rob us of the unexplainable joy of heaven. 
If we must enter heaven, we must work against all sinful acts and abominable practices. Heaven is a holy place meant for holy people. We must live in light of our external hope to inherit the truth in these verses. We must not shrink back into the face of turmoil, hardship, or persecution. We must, therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58.